Hey, I'm Stephanie, and today is all about FOMO. Mom, if you're watching, that's just fear of missing out. So we're gonna talk about that and how I am dealing with it because we are currently in the midst of the Sephora sale and everybody is posting their hauls, anti-hauls, recommendations, or some of them are just kind of straight up dissing the sale. And I mean, I kind of understand why. The Sephora sales event isn't really an event. It's a relic from the age when makeup never used to go on sale. You youngins have it so easy nowadays. I remember back when makeup never went on sale, except at the great Sephora sales event, when we would have to walk to Sephora uphill, in the snow, both ways. But now that great sales are a dime a dozen throughout the year, the Sephora sales kind of like, meh. And yet, the echoes of the Sephora sales event's past greatness continue to reverberate through the halls of social media in the form of dozens upon dozens upon dozens of videos. Oh look, you're watching another one right now. And amidst all the hauls and wish lists, I found that I was feeling a twinge of the old familiar FOMO. And this is coming from someone who isn't even mildly tempted by the measly 10% discount I would get at that sale. Which to be honest, I found kind of weird. But then I remembered something that I think Cam from Cloverum, linked below, said in one of their videos last year. And that is that the Sephora sales event is kind of like a community event. And when we purchase something in the sale, that's kind of like a ticket to participate in that community. It's like a social thing. And when they said that, I had a bit of an epiphany, an epiphany, if you will. My FOMO has nothing to do with makeup. It has everything to do with connection. Maybe you, like me, are a lone makeup lover in a desert filled with kernels of sand, which represent people who could not care <laughs> the least about cosmetics. Sure, I have friends and family who enjoy makeup, but they don't live anywhere near me. And also, they're not nearly as obsessed as I am. <laughs> but if you are watching this video, chances are you might be equally obsessed. So if I were to say shop the Sephora sale and then share my haul with you, that would feel kind of like a secret password to the party, instant connection. But I mean, you are my cosmetic comrade. We talk about makeup all the time, which means I don't have to buy it to talk about it with you. So instead of telling you what I bought at the Sephora sale, I'm gonna tell you what I didn't buy because I'm being practical. And then I'm gonna tell you how I shopped my stash to scratch that itch. And that way the FOMO will be canceled all around because we'll have some connection and I get to play with makeup. <laughs> Thing number one, if you've been following me for a while, this will be no surprise, but I am still lusting after that Gucci bronzer in shade one in particular, because it looks so rosy. But instead of purchasing that gorgeous packaging filled with rosy beige dirt, I decided I would simply use my own rosy beige dirt today. This artifact, I think has no right to still be in anyone's collection because I, I don't even know how long the brand has been defunct now. Do you? It's Marc Jacobs. It's old, but I don't care. I regularly wash my brushes and disinfect my makeup and it still works just as well as the day I bought it. So I'm gonna keep using it until that's no longer the case. I know the front is starting to look a little bit dingy, but that is dye, <laughs> not dirt. <laughs> So I feel safe putting this on my face. The Marc Jacobs Tantastic Bronzer has long been a favorite of mine and I never take it with me on tour because I'm afraid it will break. And that makes the reunion oh so much sweeter every time I return home. But there is one thing that is really wrong with this or maybe it's just really right because I have now used this bronzer over 500 times and I can still see a whole lot of the embossing on the pan. There is the, the teeniest, tiniest nano dip in the pan. And I don't know how that's happening. It's like the never ending bronzer. I'm not complaining. I'm just wondering how it's defying the laws of physics. And after using an enchanted never ending classic like this, I would feel a little bit like a traitor if I just turned my back on Marc Jacobs and just went out and got the Gucci. So 
I'm gonna continue enjoying this one. Another item that's been tempting me lately is the new Danessa Myricks Groundworks palette, the pink version. Not only am I drawn to all of the colors in that palette, but also the fact that it's got both the putties and the powders, and it seems like it would be really useful to me in my travels. But you know what I already have? this luxurious Tom Ford quad in Forbidden Pink. Yes, it is very different than the Danessa Myricks palette, but I can still get those very kind of watercolory sheer washes of color with, with these formulas that kind of gives me the same effect. And these are very similar colors to what's in her palette. So I can definitely get away with this. And you know what's another added benefit of using this, in addition to the fact that I already own it and don't have to go out and buy it? is that it's got sparkles too. Danessa Myricks doesn't have that. Another recent temptation for me is Prada's soft matte lipstick in the shade Caramel, but I am not going to buy that lippy right now because even though I have panned several lipsticks, I have not purchased any lippies in the past two years and I'm kind of on a roll. The reason I haven't purchased any new lipsticks, despite my panning success, is because I can just shop my stash for another lippy I love. Back in the day, before my no by year, before my adagio beauty journey began, I was a mindless hoarder of lipsticks. And they're all pretty much the same color because it's my favorite. <laughs> so until I use all of the colors I own that are similar to that Prada lipstick I like, I have no business purchasing it. Instead, I went wild and chose my dragon lipstick in the shade M10 from ZC Cosmetics. And just in case you missed my ZC Cosmetics review, my dragon does have a name. It is Fufu. The case is whimsical, the contents smell like Nilla wafers, and the lipstick has a soft matte finish. And if I'm being honest with myself, do I really need a Prada lipstick if I have a dragon that smells like cookies? Playing with these three items from my collection was so much fun. In fact, I think it was more fun than if I had been playing with those new tempting goodies from Sephora because not only did I get to play with makeup, which is just something I love to do anyway, but also I get to have the satisfaction of using something I've already paid for and something I already know and love. And perhaps most satisfying it all, I got to soothe my FOMO by connecting with you. So I hope that you'll chat with me in the comments. Did you shop the sale? Did you have to talk yourself out of shopping the sale? Or did you get something? And if so, I hope you'll tell me so that I can live vicariously through your joy. If you are into makeup, slow shopping content, or I don't know, <laughs> dragons like Foo Foo, I hope you'll like, comment, subscribe, all that jazz. But even if you don't, I hope you have a great week and that we can all remember that even stumbling can be a form of moving forward. So let's stumble in style.